Will these overheated markets cause the Fed to maybe pause their rate cuts? Today, we're going to break it all down for you and a little bit about Bitcoin and where it might be going. You don't want to miss it. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back into TechPath. All right, before we get started, let's get into self-custody. If you've thought about self-custody and you just are thinking, maybe it's too complex, all you have to do is go over to Tangium.com, get one of the three-card sets, and download the app from the iOS store, from the Android store, and you can actually get started with self-custing your own crypto. So get that stuff off of uh, exchanges, get it in there so you can keep it and start locking it in. Make sure and use our code. Uh, it does help the channel out. All right, let's get into a couple of topics today. One was this news item right here from Market Watch. Wall Street is divided on whether or not Bitcoin is frothy and will undo the Fed's rate cut plan. So remember, Powell has already started to slow the potential of a Fed rate cut. And part of this has been because of the overperformance of the economy. Many people are now looking at the overperformance of the digital asset side that this could cause the Fed to continue to push the can down the road in terms of a rate cut. Now, I think that is a little bit of an overstated position. I'll go back over to a tweet I did this morning. And this was kind of highlighting that very thing. More, more Bitcoin and crypto FUD as now the Federal Reserve is worried about the Bitcoin froth not cutting rates. And digital assets. If you look at the financial sectors out there, and I'll pop this piece open right here and showcase it. These are the 11 sectors of finance. Energy, materials, industry, or industrials, consumer discretionary. You see the list. All totaling around 50 trillion. 50 trillion versus the 1.3, 1.4 trillion that we have rocking right now in Bitcoin. So it's kind of silly that the entire financial, the global financial industry is worried about the froth in Bitcoin. I just don't see that. I think this goes back to the whole point of the market's just now seeing that, hey, there's a wake up call. There's a 12th sector now, it's called digital assets. Let's go to a clip right here from Tom Lee of whether or not these markets are healthy. Listen to what he had to say. I don't know what you'd call it with technology, but at least uh, some of the bloom has come off the rose on the Magnificent Seven, or at least a couple of them, and on technology in general, although the NASDAQ has, has recently hit some new highs. Do you see any trouble uh, there, or, or at least a moderation of the gains from recent years? Uh, well, I, I, I think it's understandable that technology could be consolidating some of the gains, because the gains since October have been prodigious. I think it's been healthy, um, because small caps... Um, industrials, uh, other sectors have started to lead. So I think it's a sign that the market is broadening. Um, so I don't think technology valuations are to bubble. I, I actually just think it's been healthy. So uh, Lee kind of talking about, I think more of this has been around the AI narrative and to a handful of companies that maybe somewhat connect to the AI narrative. His statement there Markets are just, this is kind of how the evolution of what we see in tech goes. Uh, the question was whether or not this could derail the markets if we saw a pullback on AI. Because remember, if we start to see securities pull back, does that mean that we see the full correction in the digital assets side of things? Listen to what he had to say. Two things would probably derail a, an equity move of 20% this year. You know, something even pushing the markets down. One would be if inflation... Uh, reasserts itself in a way that the Fed has to reverse its action and become quite hawkish again. Uh, I think that would terrify markets. Uh, the second is if monetary policy is so restrictive now that we slip into a recession. I, I don't think we're losing that much economic momentum, but but either would, would be negative for stocks. Now you, You've heard me say this before, is that we're kind of walking this very, very fine line right now. It's a razor wire somewhat in the sense of if the Fed looks at where inflation is going and says, hey, wait a minute, we think it, a reversal is going to be a need, this would absolutely impact the market. We would see an immediate impact on securities. And a 5,100, 5,200 Dow is definitely going to see a pullback. If that were to happen, you can expect major corrections. Now, the other side of that is going to be a potential recession. That's when you've over-tightened too much. So the cause here is, do they wait too long to pause, or I shouldn't say pause, but pull back and actually give us a rate cut. Question is going to be June. June, I think, is the date that we have to all watch for. Now, the question is, where is Bitcoin by June or towards the end of the year? All of this plays into one other clip that I want to play for you guys right now of where Bitcoin's target price could go. Listen in. Well, I, I think that in the, you know, sometime in the next 12 
18 months, you know, Bitcoin can be over 150,000. Um, but that's because, you know, the, the backdrop for Bitcoin is so much more favorable today. We, we've got more visible demand from the spot ETF. And we know the supply dynamic is improving with the halving coming up, which is less than a month away. It does help that the Fed is becoming uh, dovish. I mean, that's easier monetary policy. And I think from a regulatory perspective, we had so many hammers dropped in the last 12 months, really 18 months, that unless it's going to be worse over the next two years, you know, Bitcoin's already faced sort of the peak of regulatory backlash. So peak of regulatory backlash, you look at what we've talked about here on our channel quite a bit is the regulation landscape, what it looks like. Here's Ron Hammond. He's talking about the House uh, GOP hearing the CFTC chair, Benham, double down on ETH as a commodity. Rules aren't clear. Congress needs to go ahead and pass a market structure. This is something that we've all been known and has been coming. And maybe we're finally getting to that point where there is some reality of this happening. Now, even with that being said, you still have the SEC coming in to postpone a decision on Bitcoin ETF options proposals. So it's not all rosy, even though the ETFs have continued to be really much, pretty much the story around where Bitcoin is today. And I think the next major catalyst for the market is going to be the Ethereum ETF. So when you look at that and the comparison of what that might look like, you have to look at the current market of Ethereum as a whole. Total ETH burned right now crosses 1.5 million. This is all ahead of this Denkun upgrade. Remember, Denkun all going to affect the layer twos in terms of gas fees. I know this gets into some complexities, but if you think about the number of projects, the amount of con uh, uh, transactions that are operated outside of ETH, but in layer two, now you start to understand the impact of what that might mean. Here's a good example, Polygon. This is proof of stake chain addresses. And this is like five days old. So this chart is still under, this was Feb 29th, and you could see the acceleration here just on Polygon transaction. This has spiked well beyond that. Again, this is where some of these kinds of advancements will help. So ETH at the next level, gonna be a big one uh, to watch for sure. And of course, the countdown to Denkun is five days out, 17 hours. So we're not very far away from that. Could see a very interesting high around ETH going over 4K. Maybe by this weekend. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, if you guys are not in the Diamond Circle, make sure and jump in right now. It's a great place to get additional content. It's also where we're doing our Telegram group now. We all launched one just for the Diamond Circle members. So if you are a member, you'll get a notification where you can join that Telegram group. And we do a lot of additional uh, content research, all that good stuff right there. Catch me on X at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.